This is titrating P high based on the esophageal manometry. So when using um, airway pressure release ventilation, plateau pressure is commonly evaluated to identify the potential for lung injury. And also you set your P high based on a plateau pressure. So ideally we want to keep target plateau pressures under 30 centimeters of water as well as P high setting values. Unfortunately, in some patients, the plateau pressure may be falsely elevated and be relatively different than the transpulmonary or pleural pressure. And this disparity can be very common in the morbidly obese patients, patients with abdominal compartment syndrome, and in patients with extreme fluid overload. Uh, in obese patients, it has been well documented that as the body mass index increases, FRC drops significantly and compliance is falsely calculated due to the abdomen pressing down on the thorax. Uh, this misleading uh, measurement can lead the practitioner to adjust the ventilator inappropriately. So one way we can evaluate a transpulmonary pressure in these types of patients is use esophageal manometry. So first you can use a standalone unit that um, measures esophageal pressures or you can use a ventilator that has this uh, measurement of value. Um, you can use auxiliary pressure monitoring. So this screen is an example of a Hamilton G5 ventilator and you can monitor esophageal pressures with this ventilator instead of having a standalone unit. Um, this is also available to some biases um, ventilators where you, it, you can monitor esophageal pressure. So I'm going to give you an example of pressure waveforms. And here are my two pressure waveforms and my pressure me uh, measurements. We want to look at these also. So I'm just going to highlight this portion of the ventilator screen. And you notice I have a peak airway pressure right here, and I have auxiliary pressure. So that's my pox. That's just a auxiliary pressure. And with this pressure line is the um, actually esophageal um, balloon was attached to this pressure line, and I can see what my esophageal pressure is. And these values here are actually the measured values based on the cursor. So the screen was frozen and we use the control knob to scroll over to actually see the pressures. I'm going to go back to look at the pressure measurements and as you notice I have a peak pressure of 37. I'm just going to highlight that again. I'm going to change the color in red and left hand portion of the screen, portion of the screen. I have a peak pressure of 37 centimeters of water and as you notice my peep is set at 18. So from the measured values, I had approximately an airway pressure of 37. And as you notice, we scrolled over and we're evaluating the two separate pressures. And here's my peak airway pressure. And at this point, it was 36.6 .6 or approximately 37 centimeters of water. However, the esophageal pressure, and this is the esophageal, is much different and this is only 26 so that's a difference of 10 centimeters of water so that is significantly different so if we were setting our P high based on just this um, peak airway pressure my state this kind of limits me on how high I can set my P high. However, if we reevaluate the esophageal pressure, we notice we have room to play. So at 26 centimeters of water, I could actually titrate my P high by no, another 4 centimeters of water. So this esophageal um, pressure measurement give us, gives us a more, um, more options. It just gives me... A, um, a more idea of what the actual transpulmonary or pleural pressures are and I can adjust my settings based on these measurements.